Hello, welcome to Professor Sky's Record Review, the only first listen new music review show hosted by a French professor immediately after leaving the gym. Got kind of a little Coriolis effect over here. I don't know, looks kind of cool. What do you care? You're not looking over here anyway. Uh, so today I'm gonna to be reviewing Digitalism and their album JPEG. And uh, <clears throat> well, I'm gonna have one of my sort of fancy schmancy, potentially pretentious previews uh, prologues here, and I want to talk to you a little bit about art history. This is uh, Gardner's Art Through the Ages. Uh, if you don't own a giant book like this about art history, like a survey of art history, um, you should really get one. They're very expensive, but it's very useful and it will make your entire life a lot better. And uh, what I want to talk about a little bit, and this is all tied into digitalism, uh, is, is the work of this guy, Caravaggio. So you know, Caravaggio was a, was a Roman guy, lived an interesting life of eh, probably murder and sex and lust and all that stuff. And, and he developed this kind of style in, in, the, you know, in, the, in the Baroque period. And it's very famous because you, know, like you can tell that he's basing them off models, but the way that it looks, like a stage, and the way that he uses darkness and expression, I mean, you can really see the expression on people's faces, and, and just the atmosphere and the mood that he sets is amazing. He's just an amazing artist. I mean, here's another Caravaggio. Uh, this is uh, St. Paul getting trampled by a horse. Just look at how dramatic and just how wonderfully lit it is, you know? And it's kind of photorealistic, you know, showing a lot of talent. But really, it's just this ability to create these characters that are in this space. So that's Caravaggio. And the thing is, is that any great artist or any revolutionary artist, if they're not followed by somebody else, what did they really accomplish? I mean, they accomplished a little something. But the truly great artists like, managed to leave a legacy <clears throat> of many other people following them. To the point where, just one page later, we get to artists like Domenico and Gentileschi that completely aped his style to the point where they're just called Caravaggisti, like Gentileschi here, with Judith and the head of Holo, you know, Holofrenes and all that thing. Uh, Holofrenes? Wait, who is this? Yeah, Judith with the head of Holo, uh, Holofrenes. The same kind of lighting, the same kind of painting models, the same kind of photo style realism, the same atmosphere, uh, to the point where when you're in a museum, it's hard to tell the difference between a Caravaggio and the Caravaggisti. That's what they call the people who followed Caravaggio. So where am I going with this? Well, first of all, Caravaggio died pretty young, and he didn't make that many works. Uh, one time I was in Rome and I went, I saw like 20% of his works in one day. I mean, that was all I did that day. But still, like, he didn't make that much art. So the fact that they're Caravaggisti is great because this style is very engaging. Uh, it, it lends itself to a lot of drama and to a lot of interesting themes represented in a way that is very engaging. You know, if you go to the Museum of Fine Arts in Boston, there's like five or six great Caravaggisti paintings. And they're all made in this model, copying this wildly influential person. Is it good that they exist? Should they have been trying to innovate something? Well, maybe, but maybe it's actually better that they exist. Maybe we need artists to be followed and even copied and even aped because what they did was so great that we just need more of it, more in that style. Which brings me to digitalism. They are Caravaggisti of Daft Punk. Daft Punk is definitely one of these artists, and I talk about them all the time on my channel, that are so influential and so completely changed the game for electronic dance music that in the future, I think, people will go back and, and they'll listen to streams of electronic dance music of the 2010s and the 2000s, and they'll be like, is that a real Caravaggio or is that a Caravaggisti? Is that a real Daft Punk song or is it just someone who's copying it? And, and there'll be the sort of intelligentsia, will be so, well, you can tell by the nature of the sfumato over here that it's very clearly a Caravaggio, right? Um, <clears throat> it's not the kind of thing where I think in 100 years and 50 years and 20 years, people will actually be able to always tell the difference. And much like it is with Caravaggio, I think it's a good thing. Now, I'm going to get into how digitalism isn't just aping 
Daft Punk. They do a lot of interesting things, a lot of original things. But I would say the majority of the record feels so much in the mode of what Daft Punk does. But what is that? What are the things that they're doing? What is the equivalent of the heavy shadow play and the stage-like setting and the photo-like pictures? Well, you know, it's a duo of artists, which this is. I really credit Digitalism. Uh, they're German, not French, but still. Um, basically, the entire album is just the two of them making art together. I don't know what it was about Daft Punk that realized that that's the right number of people to make good electronic music, but basically, most of the great electronic music that's been made has been made by a duo. And with this sort of taking yourself seriously and taking art seriously and making well-crafted albums, not just pumping things out like, you know, Dead Mouse style. Well, I like Dead Mouse, but you know what I'm saying. Um, so, you know, having like a duo with production excellence, uh, changing styles in general, sort of in a house, upbeat, dancey style. Uh, some artists copy their, their disco style, which is a different later Daft Punk. Uh, lots of kind of vocoder sounds, phasers, compressed electronics, a certain usage of the tools of a computer to make a very cool, what I think of as kind of a crunchy, compressed sound. Themes of technology, themes of love, themes often of the alienation of technology. That's all the sort of elements that make up a Daft Punk or a Daft Punk... Caravagisti? Daft Punk Isti. A Daft Punk Isti work, like this is. Um, at times, and I, I am going to spend a fair amount of time discussing the ways that it's not just this, because it, it, it is a better album than just a straight copy of Daft Punk. But even in the title, right? Like, the title brings you in. JPEG, right? Like this kind of concept, and a lot of the album, a lot of the themes of the album are about the relationship between memory and digital life, which is random access memories. I mean, that's what the title is, right? It's random access memories. Uh, but it's an interesting theme, and I, I think it's one worth studying. And you look at the, the, the tracks, you know, JPEG, Panavision, Olympia, No Data, so much of it is tied into the relationship between like things that capture images. Uh, and the loss of memory or the loss of those images. So already, it's quite an ambitious album with that theme. To be able to approach that theme requires a, a fair amount of bravado and confidence in yourself. Um, I'll go over quickly the bits that are the most Daft Punk, in, Daft Punk Easty uh, on this whole album. Uh, Voltage is the most egregious. It's got like it basically sounds exactly like the sounds that are made in Human After All, the kind of crunchy vocodery guitar thing. Hey, thank you, Digitalism, for resuscitating that sound. That sound should not be stuck just in that one eh, disappointing album from 2007, six, whenever the album was. Like, that's a great sound, and I'm glad that it's back but it's really hard to listen to it and not say, is this kind of an outtake? In a similar way, probably my favorite track on the album, Olympia, just sounds like an outtake from Homework. And I'll play it for you a little bit right now. Uh, Homework being Daft Punk's first album, their most housey album. Just have a listen here. And again, this is a great song, well produced and well put together. That doesn't really give you that good of an indication. Uh, this is one of those records you have to listen to on headphones. I listened to it in the car on the way to the gym, and I was like, eh. And then I put in headphones, I'm like, whoa, there's way more layers to it than you just heard right there. Um, but it's good. It's all very solid. It's all in this tradition, like Gentle Eshi, of following somebody who did something great. Uh, another track, Infinity, that sounds kind of like a Tron outtake, which again, I, I love what, what Daft Punk you know, with what they did with Tron, you know, like that kind of like extended out sound, kind of soundtrack, a little bit spacey feeling. I like what they did with it and I'm glad someone's following it. The whole album has that kind of feel, but I'm not gonna just let it stop there. I wanna talk about it a little bit more. 
I mean, tracks like the opening one, JPEG, goes beyond just being simple aping of Daft Punk. It's got this nice kind of smooth, pulsing bass. Uh, it's actually kind of New Order-ish, like the guitars, like, gong down, gong down. Um, and then there's, like, singing. And the singing, if I had any real criticism of this group, like, what I don't like about them. Like, I like everything about it. I would listen to this record any time. The singing's a little bit thin. And I think it's one of them who does the singing. Um, Daft Punk singing can be thin as well, but they bolster it with effects and ro robotness. And that isn't quite the case here, but there isn't a ton of singing on the album. And it's interesting because, you know, the track is about optical perfection and memory, and that's quite good. Another track, Panavision, the next one, really the first four or five tracks are the most ambitious. Um, kind of a sparse song with kind of these washing, these keyboards that wash over you. Um, and there they actually integrate acoustic drums, which is nice. They do a little bit of integration of acoustic things and electronic things. Um, later, there's a track called No Data, which has like all this guitar work on it. Um, it sounds a little bit like, uh, like the song with the strokes that Daft Punk did, a little bit of the singing, but it's nice. That's about forgetting and data. It has kind of like a good breakdown and just a real strong guitar throughout the whole thing. And they're not afraid to kind of mix together acoustic and electric in a way that Actually, I don't even really think Daft Punk tries to do. So that's quite ambitious and good. Uh, the track uh, Disc 404 is this sort of, a, it stands out from the rest of the album. Most of the album isn't like it. It's basically like a, it's like a cool sort of like Africa Bambada beat, you know, um, and flangy, crunchy synths and singing about being at a disco and losing yourself and finding yourself and moving your body. Uh, really good kind of... Uh, synth detail at the end. Again, you really have to listen to this record closely to appreciate it and really understand the layers uh, that they put on here. Uh, Chrome.exe is just a badass tune. It's just, it's got this great sort of like, I don't even know how, just listen to it. It's just one of those badass electronic dance songs that just, you know, I, I was on the elliptical at that point, I like, woo, woo, and they do nice things with it where they develop it as it goes, and by the end it kind of like actually falls apart, and it's nice the way that it falls apart and the way that they manipulate the sort of lead line that takes you through the song till it kind of disintegrates. Um, then the last two tracks are quite nice. Data Gardens is this kind of natural sounding, you know, the term Data Gardens is evocative, and it's one of the instrumental tracks and you just sort of feel like you're in a garden filled with bits of boops and just kind of flying up and then ending with, with this track Speed of Light that's just kind of a nice, solid, workman-like electronic dance song. So there's my review of Digitalism. The Daft Punk, Daft Punk Isti. That just doesn't sound right, Sky. Can't win them all. I'm very glad they exist. I think this is great. I like all the artists in this sphere. I think basically any good techno or any good electronic dance music has to be drastically influenced by Daft Punk in order to be any good. Uh, oh, now let's pretend like I've got a sign that says fight me or uh, change my mind. Because I'm pretty sure I'm right. But you can change my mind in the comments. All right, until next time, uh, here's the camera.